So we will be getting started today on uh, Nagarjuna's Precious Garland. We left off on stanza 461. And, uh, okay, D. Son Ramachay. Bene. Donda. So now the human basis uh, that we have at this moment is very difficult uh, to obtain. So the human basis that is very difficult to obtain, we currently possess this. Now we have this human basis. So we're able to, because we possess this human basis, to, to create many of the um, causes for more human basis in our future lives. The opportunity, because of this basis, is provided for us to cause the, make the, create the causes for more opportunities of human basis in our future lives. So what does one have to do to practice? First one abandons the 10 non-virtuous activities, engages in the, or engages in the ethics that abandons the 10 non-virtuous activities, goes for refuge to the three jewels of the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha. And then an understanding of uh, karma and its results. Uh, so, um, relying and understanding on karma and its results, abandoning the uh, non-virtuous, ten non-virtuous activities, uh, and then going for refuge. By, by combining these things, we can have this human basis. Those are the causes. So, if we engage in these causes, then in the future, those, the, that result, those results will occur. So the human basis, if we engage in the causes for the human basis, those human, that result will occur in the future. So just like if you have a mango tree and the cause for a mango tree, if you have that, just like if you have the cause for a mango tree, you will have a mango tree. Sajinaji Nakatan Okay, so beginning with stanza 461, thus those 10 grounds renowned as the 10 Bodhisattva grounds, the ground of Buddhahood is different, being in all ways inconceivable. So going back to last class, uh, showing um, how the ten bodhisattva grounds are the the valid basis for the causal grounds for the the eleventh ground, which is Buddhahood. Uh, so we find in uh, other texts where um, they they mention it's we find that Chandrakirti it says here Chandrakirti's explanation here of the eleven grounds, the very joyful and so forth, is based on Nagarjuna's rough presentation of the tenth grounds, with the eleventh being the Buddha, Buddhahood. Um, so that here it's why the presentation of the definite number of 10 is given um, because it's also cited as 11 in other places, but the 11th is the actual Buddhahood. Um, so um, that was where we left off last time. Its great extent is merely said to be endowed with the 10 powers. Each power is immeasurable too, like the limitless number of all transmigrators. The limitlessness of a Buddha's good quality is said to be like the, li 
limitlessness of space, earth, water, fire, and wind in all directions. Um, so when we studied the Lam Rim, we went over the excellent qualities of the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, and the enlightened activities. So if we go back to the Lam Rim, we'll find in that commentary the eight excellent qualities of the Buddha, the definition, all of the points that are made um, from, I think, Uttara Tantra, I believe, um, and the Parshin Shittun's definitions are all on there. So if you want to find out what this means, and I think the 10 powers are all presented as well, uh, they're all in the previous teachings. If the causes are reduced to a mere measure and not seen to be limitless, one will not believe the limitlessness of the good qualities of all the Buddhas. Therefore, in the presence of an image or a monument or something else, say these stanzas three times every day. And when we, we talked with Rinpoche about the limitless word before, um, uh, it means that we aren't able, there's not a measurement that we as beings can, can come up with. So we say li the word limitless, but it's just a, immeasurable in the sense that we don't have a measurement that big that we could understand with our little minds. Um, so uh, there's a lot of debate about immeasurable because there's measurement. If there's immeasurable sentient beings, then that means the Buddha can't measure them. Uh, so anyway, uh, Jeju le so Sage the <laughs> Tanger
Sedangkan Okay. Where were we? What stands up? Uh, one second. Therefore, in the presence of an image or monument or something else, say these 20 stanzas three times every day. Going for refuge with all forms of respect to the Buddha's excellent doctrine, supreme community, and bodhisattvas, I bow down to all that are worthy of honor. So here we see refuge, the first foundation, of going for refuge to the Buddha, the Dharma, the Sangha, um, and then it's saying, and the bodhisattvas. Um, so why would we differentiate uh, bodhisattva and supreme community because if it's a bodhi, if one is a bodhisattva, they are not necessarily sangha. Um, but if it is sangha, um, it does not necessarily. Um, uh, so yeah, if it's bodhisattva, it's not necessarily sangha. And if it's uh, sangha, it's not necessarily bodhisattva. Um, so it's a being who is an arya who is sangha, someone who's seen emptiness directly, is the sangha. Um, so a bodhisattva who's on the path of accumulation or preparation, who's of dull capacity, uh, would not be sangha yet technically because they haven't seen emptiness directly. Uh, so that's the, why there's this addition here, why you would say, why wouldn't the bodhisattva be in the uh, supreme community? That word supreme is inferring that there's a supremacy of view. Uh, that's why they translate it like that at times. And it, it's those who've seen emptiness directly. Um, um, so it's saying I'm bow down. I make I I I make prostration to these beings. So we see the beginning of the seven limb prayer here. Uh, so the seven limb prayer first making prostration. So it says I bow down to the Buddha, the Dharma, and the Sangha, and those Bodhisattvas. Uh, so the first limb of the seven limb prayer is presented there: prostration, the limb of homage. I will turn away from ill deeds and thoroughly take up all meritorious actions. Um, uh, so. The one thing that, where's the offering, if it's seven limb prayer? I asked the question. I, I brought this monster up, but I think I may be, Rinpoche, the Chupa Kabiare, the Yenla Dumba. The Chu Nam La Shatselo, then Deepa Shaba. Ivalin 
<laughs> what we're discussing right now is that I asked the question, I said, isn't this a seven limb prayer? Because it, all the limbs are there. But when you start to analyze it, you don't find the limb of offering. So the second limb of the limb prayer is offering, prostration, offering, um, confession, rejoicing, requesting to turn the wheel of Dharma, begging or entreating the beings to stay with us and then and dedication so i jumped here because it's all the parts were there but i don't see the offering um so then um, yeah he says i, I don't see it yet. so so we'll just table that so just know that the seven limb prayer has seven limbs six of them are here with a very long dedication of aspirations um but you know maybe it's inferred within it or something but so it's just a question that we can just put in our brains. I will turn away from all ill deeds. So we see here, I bow down to all worthy of honor. So we have homage there. Then we go right to confession. I, I will turn away from ill deeds and thoroughly take up all meritorious actions. I will admire all the merits of embodied beings. So here we have confession and rejoicing. But we could load, take up all meritorious actions with offering if we were going to try to load an offering in there because it just says thoroughly take up but it says turn away from ill deeds and thoroughly take up all meritorious actions um so anyway i will admire the merits of all in, embodied beings rejoicing with bowed head and joined palms i petition the perfect buddhas to turn the wheel of doctrine and remain uh, so turn the wheel of dharma and to stay in the world as long as transmigrating beings remain so then we begin to see the dedication part. Through the merit of having done this and through the merit that I did earlier and will do, may all sentient beings aspire to the highest enlightenment. May all sentient beings have all stainless faculties, released from all conditions of non-leisure, um, uh, freedom of action and endowment with good li livelihood. May all, also may all embodied beings have jewels in their hands and may all limitless necessities of the life remain unconsumed as long as their cyclic existence. May all women at all times become supreme persons. Okay, so Rimache was saying that this is a controversial line. He said, I, this, this is, he said, you know, what they exactly this meant, uh, it's uncertain. He said something to that effect, uh, something about this, this stanza, because it, if you look at the footnote, it says supreme persons is, means Buddhas, but sometimes can be translated as man if it's being in a patriarchal society. We know how culture works. Um, so that's just a point that's made here. Uh, Rinpoche actually read it and said like, uh, you know, something like, you know, I don't know. Anyway, may embodied beings have a pleasant complexion, good physique, great splendor, a pleasing appearance, freedom from disease, strength, and long life. May all skilled in the means to extinguish suffering and have liberation from all suffering, inclination to the three jewels and the great Buddha's wealth of doctrine. May they be adorned with love, compassion, joy, even mindedness, devoid the afflictions, emo devoid of the afflictive emotions, giving ethics, patience, effort, concentration, and wisdom. Completing the two collections of merit and wisdom, may they have the brilliant marks and beautiful features even while on the path, and may they cross without interruption the ten inconceivable grounds. May I also be adorned completely with all those other good qualities, be free from all defects, and have superior love for all sentient beings. May I perfect all the virtues for which all sentient beings hope, and may I always relieve the sufferings of all embodied beings. May those beings in all worlds who are distressed through fear become entirely fearless, even though merely hearing my name through seeking or thinking of me or only hearing my name may beings attain great joy naturalness free from error definiteness toward complete enlightenment and the five clairvoyances throughout the continual lives may i always in all ways help all 
and help and happiness to all sentient beings. I think I don't think we read the next stanza, but I'll read it just in case. May I always, may I always, without harm, simultaneously stop all world beings and all worlds who wish to commit ill deeds. Trila Don Lenja, more. Okay, so we'll we'll have question and answer now. Um, anybody has questions? I'll go to the video, or maybe I give people a moment because they didn't know we were doing that. Anybody here have a question? You can start there. Yes. Five clairvoyances. I, I'm going to need my notes for that. Do you know them in English? If he says them? Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I just. The. Mushing, ah, Gary. Mushing, I just said she be mushing. Others. George, you didn't mushing. Birth. Go there. I have it right. I now in Chinese English. So the question was, what are the five clairvoyances? And I defer to uh, Lao San Duniela um, because I, I have them all in my notes, but it's just easier when you have two scholars who can just make it happen quickly. Let's just do that. So uh, Rimache listed the five clairvoyances and they, they are the knowledge of others' minds, right? The knowledge of previous births, right? Uh, the, no, the, the gods, what is the? Not, yeah, the god's ear, god's eye, and swift feet, maybe? No, what's the last one? Oh, it's not called Zepa, it's the um, exhaustion of Oh, the exhaustion of contamination. So those are the five clairvoyances. So knowledge, knowledge of others' minds, knowledge of previous lives, knowledge of God's ear, ears, God's voice, eyes, God's eyes, and then extinguishment of mis misdeeds. Deepa? Contamination. Contamination. Okay. Yes. Is that in order? Like one after Rimbo Yurbe, Rimbo Yoma, the Nushenga, Rimbo, Tambo, Nipa, Sumba, Zipa. No, they are not stages. Let's see what we got. I can walk again, so that's nice. <clears throat> Did Priscilla Tasha de Lay Sumpere Chiranguzu de Good Morning? The Nadru de Lay Sumpere the the Jeman Gango Cancer Nas the Cancer Chishina Dasum Operation Yapu Dasum. He said, um, so Priscilla just said good morning and uh. Tasha de Lay Grimache and Rimache said, I'm so happy to hear that your operation went well, Priscilla. Very happy about that. Anyone else? Okay, so we'll do the concluding prayers. I want to say thank you to everybody for coming. So we'll do the prayers the way we always do, concluding mandal offering, dedication, etc. The fundamental ground is scented with incense and strewn with flowers, adorned with Mount Meru, the four continents, the sun and the moon. I imagine this as a Buddha land and offer it. May all sentient beings enjoy this pure land. I dedicate whatever virtues I have collected for the benefit of the teachings and of all sentient beings, in particular for the essential teachings of Venerable Lozandrapa to shine forever. I send forth this jeweled mandala to you, precious guru. I dedicate all this virtue to emulate the knowledge of the hero Manjushri and likewise Samantabhadra as well. With whatever dedication is praised as supreme by all the conquerors who traverse the three times, I also dedicate all my roots of virtue for the sake of auspicious deeds. In the heavenly realm of Tibet, surrounded by a chain of snow mountains, the source of all happiness and helpful beings is Tenzin Jatso, Chen Resigan person, 
May his life be secure for hundreds of cowboys. I pray for the long life of the precious Kenser Wanda, upholder of scriptural and realizational doctrines, the spiritual friend who trained extensively in the five great philosophical texts with exceptional wisdom and perseverance. Okay. Uh, actually, I confused the Bible with because there's sometimes in Munshi, there's five, sometimes there's six. Oh, okay. The sixth one is Bapa Shetra Munshi. That's the one, but it's only in the mind of a Buddha. So when they list the five, then they don't list that one. It's actually the other one is Zutu Munshi. So I remember saying Zutu Munshi. Zutu. I don't think he can hear you. It's Zutu Munshi. Zutu. Zutu Munshi. What does that mean? So the bird can fly. Magical. magical. Like a bird flying in the air. Shati. Fly. Like a bird. Like a bird. Okay, okay. <laughs> Hold on one second. So, on one second. Yeah. On one second. Yeah. We're too deep. We're in too deep. <laughs> the five doesn't include the back of the game. I was reading it. I have books all over the house now. <laughs> so, I just wanted to just get the exact terms that Hopkins uses for them. Because then, you know, it's easy to just have compatibility with lexicon. Um, it's been so long since we've... Uh... Yeah, they're just listed right at the bottom of that page. Oh, are they? Wasn't that nice? Thanks, Scott. You're awesome. How long have you known that, by the way? Have you been holding back that the whole time? Are you kidding me? That's hilarious. Well, you should have. It's right here, right on the bottom. You just got to read the book. That's what. That's the shit that the Inchi K Garde Garde. The Kanga Yure. This the this the Seripa me. The Leso. The bitch the Kanga Yure. The Garishine the get us it down. Okay, everyone. So the five clairvoyances are visual clairvoyance, auditory clairvoyance, clairvoyance knowing uh, knowing others' minds, clairvoyance knowing magical emanation and clairvoyance of knowing former lives. So those are the five cleaned up with Jeffrey Hopkins' help. Thank you, Professor Hopkins, if you ever see this. So visual clairvoyance, so that's like the clairvoyance of the gods. 
the, 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 the eye of the God, the ear of the God. Because the word God is in the actual, there, so yeah, so that's tough if you're doing literal translation. So it's like the ear of the, the eye of the God, the ear of the God, the clairvoyance of knowing others' minds, clairvoyance of knowing magical emanation. So that's good. That's the one where like being able to fly like a bird, a magical emanation and clairvoyance of knowing former lives. And then the one that we were talking about before, yeah, talking about. a Buddha. That's the clairvoyance that the Buddha has, which is the extinguish the, of all contaminants. All contamination has been extinguished. All right, I like, it was a good talk. Let's see, we had another question, I think. Oh, thank you. Just a thank you. Okay, so we're good. Oh, I gotta stop Zoom, right? We did dedication, we're good to go. All right, thank you, everybody. That was funny.